What's happening, beautiful people of the YouTubes? It's your boy Ed from TechSource. Welcome to Setup Words, episode 222. We're actually halfway done with season four already. Once we get closer to episode 250, I'll reach out to you guys once again for a new intro for season five of Setup Words. So keep an eye out for that. But yeah, with that said, if you guys wanna be part of the show, watch the video linked down below. Sit back and relax because it's time for Setup Wars. The EK AIO Elite is EK's newest all-in-one maintenance-free cooler to hit the market. And it has it all, ladies and gentlemen. Six EK Varder high static pressure fans for a push and pull configuration in combination with a 27 millimeter thick 360 aluminum radiator. It also features diamond cut aluminum fitting covers on tubing joints and an upgraded SPC style pump that delivers optimal performance while offering quiet operation. The EK AIO Elite 360 is ideal for first time users while also catering to more demanding PC enthusiasts out there. Compatible with all mainstream Intel and AMD processors, this cooler will keep your system cooler than a cucumber. For more info, click the link below. Kicking off the episode is Francisco from Alabama and his pretty sweet multi setup gaming room. So guys, I wanted to start the episode with an announcement voice, but anyways. He's a manager and waiter at a Mexican restaurant and works from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m., which is a lot of hours. So he built all of this to relax and enjoy gaming after work. He built his main gaming setup from an L-shaped desk he bought from Facebook, and he painted it to match the rest of his tables. I find it interesting that he is using the Razer Raptor monitor as the main gaming display, while the 240Hz monitor is in vertical mode. My guess is that he prefers a higher resolution to a higher refresh rate. For peripherals, he's using the Corsair K95 RGB Platinum keyboard paired with the Dark Core wireless mouse. And for audio, we got the Logitech G560 speakers and the Astro A40 headset with an interesting boom arm placement. It looks like he mounted it right behind the vertical display, but if he ends up using the mic, it would block off a portion of the vertical monitor. I feel like it would make more sense on the left side. The setup is being powered by CyberPower Prebuilt, rocking the i7 8086K and the MSI GTX 1080. Uh, we also got the Razer edition of the H440 case, not bad. He did state that he would like to build his very own custom PC one day, but just doesn't have the time since he has a family with three kids that needs him when he's off. Plus, he's also afraid of messing up. The second setup is being powered by his Alienware R4 laptop, and it's mostly used for productivity with another Alienware 240Hz monitor as a secondary display. Given the size of the desk and the amount of gear he has connected, I'm pleasantly surprised he was able to manage the cables quite well. It looks like a lot of cable ties, Velcro straps, and mounting tape were used to keep everything neat and tidy under the desk. Nicely done. And finally, the third and last setup is the entertainment area right behind the main setup. He uses this to watch videos and play console games on a 65-inch 4K TV. You definitely have come a long way since your original setup, and it's really awesome to see the transformation here. Thank you, Francisco, for entering. Coming in at number two is Chris from Texas, another active member from Discord. The first thing that caught my attention, and probably yours too, is the custom-made desk that he built out of scrap metal and wood. We have an L-shaped desk with giant headboards that he used to mount his TV on one side and all three of his monitors on the other. The main display is a 240Hz monitor from Alienware with two supplemental 25-inch monitors on the sides. For peripherals, we got the Ducky 1 2 Mini in white and the Final Mouse Ultra Lite 2 Gaming Mouse. And then for audio, he's using the Sennheiser HD 599s for output and an AT2035 mic for input. Pretty straightforward stuff, really. I really like how you added your custom logo under the glass top with some LEDs around it. I think that's pretty cool. But what isn't cool is not leaving a like on my video. What a shame. The PC power in the setup is a custom build inside the Lian Li O11 Dynamic and it's packing the Ryzen 9 3900X and the GTX 1070. It's not a huge deal, but one thing I would probably have done differently was mount those three side fans on the top as exhaust, just so it's naturally following the airflow path of the bottom intake. But overall, pretty cool setup. I do love how you're able to match the lighting of your PC with the rest of the setup and extra points for the creativity that went into the custom headboards. Thank you, Chris, for entering. 
Here is another really cool setup transformation by Ollie from Germany. He used to have a modest dual monitor setup but wasn't really happy with it and he wanted to build something that was not only better but also setup wars worthy. And after one year and $3,000 later, he has built this super clean minimalistic ultra wide setup. I gotta say I love the custom wood wall he built. It adds a nice background that emphasizes the setup's presentation. He's rocking the Philips 34 inch ultra wide monitor which is actually the first time I'm seeing. This is probably the cleanest ultra wide monitor ever. I am loving the base design with the white accents all around. It definitely fits right in with the color scheme you're going for. To maintain a clean and minimalistic aesthetic, Ollie went with the wireless G903 mouse and drilled a hole in the desk to route the keyboard cable and even picked up a white stand for the iPhone and headset to complement the color scheme. Well done. The only other thing left on the desk is his custom PC that's equipped with the 7700K and the Hall of Fame GTX 1070. Actually, I lied. There is one more thing that is a part of this setup. Meet Little Shadow, who was excited to be a part of the show, who also happens to fit the color scheme. Cables are nicely managed under the desk thanks to the Signum rack, and the Natalie panels are a nice subtle touch to add a bit of spice, but I think you could take it a step further and add some artwork or decorations on that wall as well. Shout out to your girlfriend Jess for the awesome pictures and thank you Ali for entering. Coming in at number 4 is Rami from Lebanon who is a 12 year old that probably has a better setup than you. He's rocking a triple 24 inch monitor that he built in the corner of his room. If I'm being honest, it is looking a bit cramped with that massive PC on there. This is actually one of the very rare occasions that I'm going to recommend putting the PC on the floor to give you more breathing room. The right monitor is blocking it anyways. This way you can work on the cable management in the back and rearrange a few of your items in the front. And like most pro Fortnite players, we got the popular Ducky 1-2 mini keyboard paired with the glorious Model O gaming mouse. You can also tell how much of a pro someone is based on the angle of the keyboard. The more it's tilted, the better they play. I'm definitely impressed with the PC you built for your setup and although it looks really good with beefy specs, there is a major flaw. All the fans are set as exhaust, creating nothing but negative pressure. I see this all the time on Setup Wars and I want to clarify once and for all for everyone that doesn't really understand. If there is more air being pulled out of your case than being pushed in, then that creates negative pressure, which means less efficient cooling over time. You need to always aim for positive pressure, meaning more air is being pulled into the case than being pushed out. That means the same amount of intake fans or more than exhaust. I get it you guys, the PC looks much cooler with the sticker facing the back but you are hurting your components in the long run. Here's a quick tip that you guys can follow for airflow if your fans don't have directional arrows labeled on the side. Once you mount your fan to the case and you can't see the back of it where the sticker is, then 99% of the time it's set as exhaust, just like how it is for Rami's PC. And if the sticker is showing, then it's set as intake. Remember this when you're deciding on your fan configuration next time. This setup definitely needs a few tweaks to improve and considering your age, this is a really great start and I know you'll pick up a lot of experience and knowledge over time. Thank you Rami for entering. We're gonna wrap up the episode with another clean setup. Zach from Slovenia and his white on black gaming and editing setup featuring none other than the IKEA Lindman and Alex Jor combo. We got two 27 inch monitors, the 144Hz one is for gaming while the second one is for multitasking. Zach kept the surface of the desk very minimal with the ASUS ROG Claymore keyboard and Model D mouse. For audio, he's using the HyperX Fury S headphones hanging from the front of the case paired with the Behringer microphone. And finally, the PC pairing it all featuring the 8700K and the GTX 1070 Ti. This setup is really clean and straight to the point, but it's definitely missing that personality. There is nothing really that sets this apart from the rest. You know, don't be afraid to personalize it a little bit. You don't have to go overboard, but adding anything that reflects your personality will make it that much more meaningful to you. The more meaningful something is to you, the more you are attached with it. And that's why some people's setups are practically their life, mine included. And that is it for the video. If you guys enjoyed it, consider dropping a like before you head out as it does help out the channel a ton. And let me know in the comment section below which of these setups was your favorite. If you guys are new here, consider subscribing because I host Setup Wars every single Monday. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one.